Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. I recently designed this big, big star quilt block, which I love. And I wanted to make it with you all today using very different fabrics. These are the fabrics that I wanna use. Very different from that other block. Um, this will be the, the center. We'll go ahead and take a look at these fabrics in a second. I'm gonna give you all of the measurements for this block so that you can go ahead and make your own. Isn't it beautiful? I love that pink in the background, that peachy color. All right, let's take a look at the fabrics, get to measuring, cutting, sewing, and make this block. So as I mentioned, the center of the block, this piece here will be this really fun kind of fairy tale ship fabric. I just love everything about this. Uh, the Here's the selvage in case you were wondering what this was a little older 2017 so this will be the center and then as you can see the center is snowballed with these kind of green pieces here those olive green pieces and for this block i'm going to use this kind of fuchsia color to do those little snowball edges turn this right side and then let's see what else this really fun sun print here uh, will be kind of these points. The background fabric, which is peach back there, will be this bird sky fabric. And finally, these, these pieces here, which are kind of like that floral green uh, in the existing block will be these tulip pink teacups. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut out a 12 and a half inch block piece from this fabric here. Here is my 12 and a half inch block. I just love this fabric so much. I'm so excited to have an opportunity to use it. Uh, and then I also cut out four squares, four and a half inches, and I drew a line on the diagonal on each square. And I will place these, since this is solid fabric, there's no front or back, uh, but place your fabrics right sides together with the diagonal going from side to side in each of the four corners. I'm gonna sew directly on this line for each square. I've sewn along my marked line, but in addition to that, I also sewed about a half inch away from that line that I marked. Now that is not essential for this pattern, but what it does, let me show you, is that when you cut one fourth inch away from the marked line, you end up with an extra half square triangle. And we don't use this in this particular project, but you can save these and use those for another project. And as you can see, then you just iron this open and you have your snowball and you would do that for all of the corners. And it's kind of a nice little surprise because you kind of don't know what you're gonna get until you open up your little half square triangle. Quilt block. Looking good. It should still be measuring 12 and a half inches square. The next pieces that we're gonna cut out are going to be, if you look at these, this original block, are these green, these green pieces here. Kind of go all the way around. So you would think that the next step would be to cut out some background, but it's not. So what you're gonna need, and what I will say that I'm realizing is that for this block here, my fabrics really were non-directional. The only directional one was this middle one and everything else was non-directional. And that is kind of what I would recommend um, because that block was super easy to put together. And this one is also gonna be easy, but it's just gonna take a little more paying attention. So you need to cut out uh, four of these 12 and a half inch by six and a half inch blocks. But for me, I need to make sure that two of mine are going vertically and two of them are going horizontally. Now, if you have non-directional fabric, it doesn't matter. You can just cut out four blocks that are 12 and a half inches by six and a half inches. So there we have that. Then I have more directional fabric here. Now we're gonna use our background fabric. Cut out eight background pieces, each six and a half inches square. And Unfortunately, so let me scooch this up. So this is what you're gonna do. If you have non-directional fabric, you are going to just not pay attention at all. You're gonna flip this over 
you're in dry di draw a diagonal line so right on that line and then when you flip it up you'll have your piece here but for me I need to pay attention to the direction so for example for this if I did that my birds would be sideways so I need to make sure to rotate it so that my birds are flying the correct way so what I've done here is sewn exactly on that line that I drew and then again about a half inch away from that line so that when I cut right in between those lines I'll have my half square triangle and this one is actually bigger than the original half square triangles that we made and one thing that you do well let's take a look at this here so then you flip this open and my birds are going the correct direction and what I'll do next is I should have four more of these which I do I'll draw my line on the diagonal sew on the diagonal and then flip open and I'll have this piece here but what I was going to say is that you know we're going to end up with quite a few of these half square triangles and one thing you can do with them is make a little pinwheel which you can either use as I mentioned in a different project or you could do a little border with them or something like that but let's see how does this go there we go so that's pretty cute. Let's do the next step of attaching the four additional backgrounds onto the teacup fabric. Here's my sewn piece, just like before, I'll cut in between my two sewn lines, open it up, and I'll have this flying geese unit. I'm gonna tell you the next step in a second, but I just wanted to kind of lay this out so you could see where this is going. I'm not totally sure how happy I am with these fabrics together. It's gonna to look a lot different when I, once I sew all the pieces together. So not all hope is lost yet, but I think what might help is to put kind of a pink border around the whole thing. I think that will tie, because this is kind of very standing out to me right now. And I think that having a little border around the whole thing would help. Anyway, next step is to cut eight of your star legs each six and a half inch square eight of them and then you're gonna put them right sides together you're gonna sew a diagonal from the center out to the corner so when you flip it over you'll have your star leg here's my line that I drew and sewed on then of course again half inch back sewed another line, I'll cut in between them. So when I fold this over, this will be one of my star legs. So this will actually go, if this is my piece here, this is the bottom part, like that. Um, so I'm gonna do that for, for all four sides. And then of course, this is the other piece that you get, which is a little different than the other ones. Now you have three pieces on your extra piece instead of just a half square triangle, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, so this is how this will look. So then of course I'll put on my other star legs, sew on the diagonal from the middle here all the way to the edge and flip. And I'll do that with all four sides. I have my top, bottom, and side pieces all sewn. So now we need to work on the corners. You want to cut four squares, four and a half inches, and let's just place those so we can kind of see where they want to go. Then you're going to cut four rectangles, four and a half inches by two and a half inches, and four bigger rectangles, six and a half inches by two and a half inches. Let's place these to see where they go. We'll put the smaller ones to the side of our squares. And our larger rectangles to fill in the empty space. First, we're gonna sew the small rectangles to our square one fourth inch and iron open. We'll do that with all four corners. 
So I've sewn these pieces together and now I'm gonna sew my large triangle to the body of my corner. And I'll do that one fourth inch, flip it open. I'll do that for all four corners. All of my pieces here are sewn. And so now I need to sew the pieces together. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna use my clips here to remind me what I'm sewing together. So I'm gonna take this corner piece and sew it to the top piece along this seam here, one fourth inch. I'll put my clip to remind myself and put it next to the sewing machine. Then I'm gonna sew this side piece to the middle piece, put my clip. The bottom corner to the bottom middle. And then I'm gonna sew my top corner my side piece and I'll just leave this corner one there for now. I'm going to sew these together and then we'll see where we're at. Next I'm going to sew this top piece here to this middle piece, sewing them right sides together. Put my clip on and I'll sew this side piece to this bottom little square here, right sides together. And then I'll just leave this piece down here for a minute. We are almost finished. We have three pieces here. We have the bottom, kind of the top middle part, and then this side piece. So what I'm gonna do next is sew these two pieces together, right sides together and flip. And then once these are sewn together, I'll sew this full piece to this full piece. Here's the finished quilt block. I love it. I think it looks great. The pink is a little bit, you know, stands out a little too much for my taste. I wish those triangles were a little bit smaller. So you could adjust the size of those um, and obviously the, the tone and color, but looks good. I'm happy. This is a huge block. It's 24 and a half inches square, unfinished. It's a great block for large scale prints because even the smaller pieces, I mean, obviously that big piece in the middle would be great for a large scale print, but even some of those um, other pieces around the outside are also fairly large. Uh, so this is, this is a great project for those. I did sew up some of those other little pieces um, that I cut off of the backs, like the half square triangles and things like that. So let me show you those. So as you remember, when I had trimmed off the back of that half of that triangle, I had come up with this half square triangle and I had four of them. So I four, sewed four of these together to make this cute, adorable pinwheel. This one measures about seven inches, I would say, more or less. <clears throat> depending on your seam allowance, but super cute. You could even use these for, you know, if you were gonna um, sash each one of the big, big blocks we're making, you could use these as cornerstones um, for each of the, in between each of the sashings, have these be the cornerstones. They'd be a little bit big, but you could always cut them down a little bit to be smaller. And then the other two blocks that came out of, out of it were these pinwheels here. So if you remember this right here, was the block that ended up with three pieces. When you cut the backing off, when you sewed on both sides of the, the line of that other block, this was the block that came off. And there were four of these. So again, you kind of could put this into a pinwheel and this ends up being a double pinwheel. It has the pinwheel of the suns and then the pinwheel of the birds. And this one is also the pinwheel. This one has the pinwheel having instead of the birds coming to the center, it has the pinwheel of the teacups coming to the center. And instead of the suns creating a double pinwheel, the suns kind of create this border. So those are some fun blocks. And then finally, I did not do anything with these half square triangles um, that were, these, were the extra pieces, but you have eight of them and there's a whole variety of things you could do with these. So it's like a whole extra little project out of your leftovers. And you know, I'm thinking if that pink really does continue to bother me, I could applique some circles, you know, in the in the middle of each one of these triangles. And that would add some, you know, extra little bit of interest. It might be too busy, but there are options. There are things that you can do. I think this was a great way to use that ship kind of town, ship print. Really cool. The um, teacups kind of coming off of that teal. The fact that they're the same color is awesome. They're not the same brand of fabric or the same designer, but they do complement each other really well. And the suns obviously are super fun and happy. So thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.